So. Oh, again. Is that that? Uh, uh, do I see her like it's an instant or is yeah, she just as right an there? instant, just as an instant, and then she like fades into the shadows mm -hmm. again. But uh, at, you are able to catch a glimpse of what she looks like. Oh, why, oh, get, <clears throat> why do you get to <laughs> see such magnificence? That is no fair. I want to see Morgan in a reflection. <clears throat> Those who don't know, I have no idea who that was. It's okay. <clears throat> it's okay. That's just how, that's just how my character is. So if, if it helps me. <laughs> Hold on. I just saw someone in that mirror. What? What's going on here? Someone just kind of looks over at the mirror. I'm the mirror too, nothing. Cogs looks at the mirror and says, I don't see anything. Any weird residue of Lyrium or anything? No. It could be a demon. Nothing. No? Mm, right, nope. Keep your eyes open. I think I saw a woman. Short hair, dark hair. Um, just be careful. Clem goes up to the mirror. Uh, he sniffs around it. <clears throat> I don't sense anything strange at all from this thing. If you're seeing woman in mirrors, you must be really desperate now. Plim sort of chuckles a little bit <laughs> to himself. <laughs> this isn't the place or time, Delwyn. <sighs> Just keep your eyes open. This magic thing could be messing with our senses. As oh, yes, it's a very possibility. Demons, like I said, have a way of messing with your mind, so... Uh, as you say, steal that resolve. We? Oui? Someone just nudges Gwenael and is like, it's not demons. You guys move, <laughs> go further, uh, and yeah. you go into a room, an extremely dark uh, room, and um, the lantern um, shines at uh, a figure that appears to be in some sort of a trance, like almost like I'll show you what the figure looks like. Oh, no. oh. you see this Hot oh. damn. You see this individual. <laughs> <laughs> Just about to well. leave it when that pops up. Well hot damn. Okay. Well. Um oh. as it's, a girl. it's it's, no. it's actually yeah. it's, 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 it's no it's a male. Um okay. it's definitely a male. It's an elven okay. male. Uh, as you Are you sure? I'm pretty sure that's a girl. <laughs> No, it's a male. <laughs> I think the bird's a male, too. <laughs> yeah, the bird's male, too. You can tell because it's all pretty. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you go by anime logic and whatnot, that's too pretty to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> this is, ooh, I'm so, a suspect. <laughs> as you're, you, you manage to shine the light just, in, uh, just enough for Gwenael to recognize this person. You, Gwenael, you're like... This is Nathan. Nathan? You say his name, but you, he doesn't respond. He's, it's, he's in, again, some sort of trance in the middle of this room. You know this person? My character's just kind of staring there so that, and just kind of starts getting a bit wobbly about that. And then says, is this the name again? Nathan? It now Nathan, be. Nathan, um, Nathan um, is a lot older than when you last saw him, but his eyes, even though they're kind of blank right now, you, you recognize uh, his eyes uh, and immediately know that it's him. Um, at that moment, you start getting a ringing in your ear that gets <laughs> louder and louder. All of you feel that, and um, it's something is like coming over you, like um, as if it's trying to take over your mind. Oh everybody, no, you don't! Oh, roll, yeah, roll a willpower, everybody. Oh, Everyone roll come a willpower. On. Uh, can I make a self-discipline roll? Uh, yeah. It's a willpower focus. Yes. <laughs> okay. You can do a self-discipline. That that I'm not. My mind is already this. inhabited. It's already claimed. I'm sorry. I'm not at any penalties here right now from my environment or seeing Nathan or anything. Am I before I roll? I don't. What was, it, what was the check for? I'm not. Oh, willpower check. Okay, willpower. Is that? Yep. Oh, oh wow. I don't know. I have no idea what type of 
check this is so I don't know if I can use a stun on it. Did you Did you hear me? I'm sorry, I'm what did you what did you say? I said well, I'm not at any type of penalty from environment or seeing Nathan, am I? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think there's any penalty. Okay. Okay, good. Uh... Stunty. I stunted like... too. But on a nine, it's not gonna do me much good. Can I reroll my willpower? Uh, uh yeah, you can, and you can keep if, whatever you got left. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's saw you rolling and like rolled higher than me, and I'm getting getting nervous. Sure. <laughs> also know that there are two NPCs with you, and I rolled two oh, times. Okay, I mean, just oh, as an FYI, a forty is pretty good. I don't know. I don't know. Mine's very well. Mine's nope. seven. Screw it. I'm rolling. Yeah, I got a nine. And. Bam! Second roll, 18. Holy nice. monkey! That is really good. Nice. Much better. Okay, so who got the lowest? That's me. We're gonna really? start with Lielden, oh, since he geez. got the lowest. Have fun! And then we'll work our way up. Lielden! Right. Not a quiet giant. Um, the ringing suddenly stops. And when you, when you shake it off, you um, open your eyes and you find yourself uh, in your bed, at home. Um, you hear, you smell, uh, the smell of bacon, uh, cooking from the kitchen. I'm just thinking uh, Auntie M, Auntie M. Yeah. Uh, and you hear the voice of your mom saying, Lildan! Lildan, come on, get up, lazy head. Breakfast is ready. Um, I get out. Particularly out of bed. And n nothing seems out of the ordinary so far, right? Just nothing particularly out of the ordinary. You get up and you see that your your dad is uh, sitting at the table, um, reading <coughs> reading uh, the paper, and uh, your mom is uh, placing some uh, bacon onto your plate with some eggs, um, and says, "Thielden, honey, there you are." How is your, how is, um, and, uh, um, you sit down in front of you and, uh, um, your dad puts down, uh, the paper in front of him and reveals, uh, a cake with candles on it. And as you sit down, um, your parents say, happy birthday, son. <laughs> they push the cake towards uh, you and light the candles. Didn't know it was my birthday already. Oh, I know. Time flies. You've been. You've. Um. Uh. It's. It feels like yesterday. You were just a little baby. She. Your mom sort of dabs her eyes. Um. Oh my god. <laughs> this is. This is out of character. You know, this. Um. How to? This clearly seems suspicious. <laughs> I would probably remember my birthday. Mm. I guess I would probably humor them and make an effort to blow out the candle. Yes. Um, so, um, Lielden, are you going to be inviting all of your friends? The entire town is really excited for the party. But I don't know if you've decided which of the many, which of the many, many friends uh, you wanted to have attend. <laughs> How many friends? I... Can I know that many people? Of course! <laughs> You're one of the most popular people. You're one of the most popular Aww. people in town, Lielden. <laughs> um, There's a knock on the door. Oh! That must that must be um um that must be um what is she gonna what is she that must be your chauffeur. Come on, ready to take you out to pick out your present. The door opens and you see a man with amazing hair missing an oh. eye. Kane oh. says, uh, "Hello there. Um, I've arrived." He doesn't look like he's very happy. He goes into the room. "Mr. Lielden, sir, at your service. <laughs> I am here to take you wherever you wish to acquire whatever presents you would like for your birthday." You know what? I'm actually all right with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I'm suspicious of this, but I'm a humor. Now I'm definitely going to humor like, this because this like, is too amusing. Screw you guys, I'm just staying here. No, I'm no. Alright. Oh my god. It makes, it, makes, it makes me think of like an Origins when you go to the tower and go to the different things and stuff. And I, think so. <laughs> I know, I know. I I'm being very good with I could so see, I could so see, I was I sad I didn't see a response like that. This is obviously not quite real, is this? I don't care. <laughs> it should have been someone's response. I was sad that no one said that. I'm go. oh, screw it, I'm going, really? screw it, I'll, I'll humor this, let's do it. Okay. Okay, I think we have a busy day ahead of us today. Yes, I'm <laughs> looking forward to it. So basically, he, you go outside and there's this lovely cart like house uh, horse drawn cart very um very expensive looking you realize that you are not living in low town you're living in high town and um uh the cane opens the door for you um and he rolls out a red carpet um as you make your way up the mm -hmm. cart he shuts the door and uh he gets up onto the up onto the cart uh but as he does his foot he sort of curses loudly as his foot steps on horse poo. Ugh. He's like he basically like sh um, he shakes it off and then he gets up on the seat and then he he goes yeah and um, as you are going as you are uh, traveling uh, I guess to the marketplace uh, you see several of the citizens waving at you. Um, uh, with happy smiles on their faces. You also notice that as you leave, you had no need to uh, put a hood over your face. Um, everyone is genuinely happy to see you in all your Kunari glory. Um, you go over to the marketplace and um, the Kane um, uh, says, All right, we'll make this quick, please. We, I have to get you back to the party in a couple hours. If you open your coin purse, you see that it's filled with, it's filled to the brim with sovereign pieces, and you pretty much can buy anything you want. You're loaded now. <laughs> Do I roll? To, I feel I feel like I should roll for checking some things. Yeah, go ahead and roll me another willpower. Right. And tell me what the value is. Eight. Eight. <laughs> you roll right. one better. I'm getting. I'm slowly but surely. You're crazy. starting to feel like okay, this this is great, but uh, something's a little off. Yeah. Something's a little off. What would what caused Kane to lose the eye? Oh no, sorry. He already, he's always lost the eye. I realize that now. Hmm. Uh, you finish whatever shopping that you do. You yeah. go over uh, back to your house, and uh, as you come into, as uh, once again, Kane does the whole thing with the red carpet. <laughs> you open the door, and uh, there's a big surprise! <laughs> and you see all these people. Uh, um, there's this big, giant happy birthday sign. You're, all your friends are there, including, um, including, excuse me, Gwenael and, uh, Gwenael oh. and, um, uh, Delwyn Max. and Maximilian, they're all there. Human people. Plim, Cogs, <laughs> just like, hoo hoo, this! <laughs> um, then you see Captain Maelstrom, but she's not in a pirate outfit. She's actually in sort of a noblewoman's outfit, attire. Um, and she comes over and she gives you a big hug. Oh, brother! My favorite brother. She gives you a kiss on the cheek. Um, mm. It's so good. It's so uh, wonderful to be able to celebrate this day. Um, isn't this ev everything just perfect? Sister? Well, yes. It's me. <laughs> Who else would it be? But you're, but you're a captain. You're, you're, I thought you were captain of an airship and there was... How? I. She's looking around, which. <laughs> she, 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 she turns around to everybody. <laughs> My brother, he has such a wonderful imagination. <laughs> uh, have something to drink, I say, boy. Bon appetit. 
Happy birthday. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like now being very confused by all this, like how everything seems almost warped. Because like first it seemed like everything was normal, but now I'm seeing people that doesn't even make sense that I would even normally right. see. Them. Mm. I don't think I'm, I'm. I'm starting to have second guesses about this now, especially. All right. After that bit of a drop from Maelstrom. At that moment, as you start having second guesses, the entire scene fades, uh, and everything around you becomes black. And then, no. little by little, the scene around you materializes again, and you um, you see your parents again. Um, and this time, instead of you like being physically there. You're sort of like this ethereal, ghostly figure that's sort of just watching things unfold. Okay. Um, you see your parents, and they um, are um, walking around in what appears to be a blizzard of some sort, a small blizzard. Your mom has a has a coat and a shawl like uh, are wrapped around her, and your father is like helping her walk through the, the snow, and they're calling your name. Uh, you recognize this area to be around where the Frostback Mountains are. You have a feeling that they're looking for you. Uh, you watch as they go into Orzammar, and they're taking, a, they have like this uh, portrait of you that they're showing the different dwarves. Mm -hmm. Have you seen this, have you seen this, you know, man? Have you seen this yeah. man? Many of them shook shake their heads no then they finally go over to a merchant um uh a merchant that you uh remember um selling an old hat the merchant comes up to the couple and says, oh yes can i interest you folks in a in a nice uh nice hat he says don't and do the, it <laughs> the two uh your parents um decline politely and says sir ha have you seen this have you seen this man and um uh, Bodan says, Oh, yes! I, I believe he went in that direction. And they thank him and continue on. Uh, then they um, continue making their way over to uh, the Diamond District and mm -hmm. uh, they uh, turn around to ask another individual and uh, the one that they, the, that they um, are calling out to to ask about you turns around and it's this massive man with a giant axe oh, no. and they show him they show uh balaam the blade the portrait uh and um he says have you have you seen this have you seen this boy now balaam the blade also has a portrait of you mm -hmm. in his hands which he quickly shuffs, stuffs down his pocket he looks at the he looks at the um, uh, picture and then he hands it back to your parents and he says, um, do you need help finding him? Uh, the parent says, yes, uh, if you're offering to, please. Uh, we don't have very much, but if you are able to help us search for him, we would be very grateful. The uh, Balaam says, uh, very well, I will aid you in your search. And your parents look are very very grateful. Fast forward a little bit, and you see that Balin Blade and your two parents are back in the Frostback Mountains again, and they're searching. They're still searching for you. <clears throat> they then hear the sound of growling in the distance, and they turn and they see a pack of winter wolves heading towards them. Um, Balin the Blade takes out his axe and he starts fighting off the wolves mm -hmm. and your mom pulls out a crossbow and your dad pulls out a short sword and they too try to fight off the fight off the wolves um but it looks like there's just too many of them Balin the blade as he's as he's hacking away with his axe he looks around and then he bolts and he runs uh your parents say wait and they chase after him as the wolves are running, running um, and following him. Bale and the Blade is is running through the snow as quickly as he can, and he reaches what appears to be a drop a, a bridge, like a wooden bridge. 
and he's running across the bridge. Your parents are following behind him. He manages to get to the across to the other side. Uh, and you watch him as your parents are trying to make it over to the other side. Um, and then all of a sudden, one of the wolves catches a grip uh, on your f dad's leg. Your mom shrieks as she, you know, tries to uh, shoot at the wolves desperately and tries to um, get the wolf off of her, off of her husband. She's yelping, screaming at Balaam to help. Balaam just sighs, takes his big giant axe, brings it down. The entire bridge collapses and your wolves and your, all the wolves and your parents fall as you hear their screams down the chasm. Balaam sheaths his axe, turns around, and then he continues journeying. Your disembodied figure falls down into the chasm with them. And um, when you reach the bottom, the bodies of the wolves are there, as well as the bodies of your parents. You then hear the voice of your mother call out to you from behind you. Um, she calls out your name and you turn around and there's a ghostly figure of her in front of you and she says, Son, how could you do this? I, I, I didn't mean for this to happen. Son, if you had never had gotten mixed up on your activities, if you have never signed up with Cain, if you have never done any of those things, none of this would have happened. I wanted to help. I wanted to make things easier for people. You're a disappointment, son. That's when your father appears. We'd still be alive if it wasn't for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to... Ooh, that's harsh. I think the only, I think the only other thing was that I'm now feeling incredibly enraged also at, at Bellum. I would I don't blame you. Who had the next lowest role? That was Charlie. <laughs> I stupidly put my hand up. <laughs> Delwyn. Oh my gosh, I want to cry now. It feels so bad when I wheel oh. down. I know. Mm. Delwyn. That actually made me angry at the, actually. There's like I was feeling sad and that's not and then the last thing the parents said made me feel so angry. I know. Uh, I gotta say that that response you gave, like I'm sorry, I didn't mean it to happen. It just performed so well. I love that's that. That's what that's yeah. what killed me. That's oh. where I, that's oh, where that I felt awesome. it right there. Thank you. So well that done, was... Lucky Jack. So well done, Delwyn. Golf club. Okay, so Delwyn, you also wake up, and uh, you find yourself. Um, um, you find yourself back on the Tempest Dream, and you yourself are dressed in a captain's uniform. <laughs> um, you see Captain Jeez. Maelstrom walk by uh, in her in her uniform, and she sort of gives you a wink, and uh, oh. she she uh, she continues on down to the to the below the deck. Uh, Victor appears behind you and says, Captain Delwyn, where to next? Oh, looks like all this hard work paid off. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait to see how I the do tem in this The Tempest, well. he says, the Tempest dream is here to serve you and your every whim. Of course it is. We, we, we know this. Uh, let's go wherever the wind takes. Alright, uh, 
the uh, the uh, vicious pig says, "Aye, aye, Captain." And the Tempest Dream uh, uh, ends up um, moving towards wherever adventure um, lies for them. Um, you end up uh, going. You end up going to pick a place. Really, just pick a place. Where do you want to go? Anywhere in Thetis. Where would Delon want to go? Of all places in the entire all of Thetis. Ravani. <laughs> yes, actually. Alright. It's it's either there or Tevinter. One of those two places. Sure. <clears throat> you go over to Tevinter, um, and you land. Uh, there are several uh, mages there who are, 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 are there to greet you, um, including your mother and father. Uh, they said, Delwyn, you've come home. Um, your sister will be very excited. Um, and uh, your sister um, runs up, who, by the way, is not in Templar uniform. Uh, she actually... Um, is in a uh, more of a she's she's in an, she's more of in a roguish type outfit I guess and uh, she uh, comes to you and she also wraps her arms around you and says oh big she's your older sister right yeah, older, she's younger. older sister. little brother she says um, I trust you came bearing gifts during your adventures? Maybe from your favorite little sis? Uh, favorite big sis? I'm sure there's something. How's Maelstrom doing, by the way? You two make such a lovely couple. We do, don't we? Yes. At that moment, uh, Captain Maelstrom uh, comes down from the ship and says, Sir, madam, at your parents, Lady. Oh, hello there, Maelstrom. Uh, Sanaya, your sister, says. Um, you guys have uh, returned back from your honeymoon, I see. <laughs> the, oh. the captain says, oh, yes. She wraps her arms around, around Delwyn and, you know, starts to, starts to uh, run her fingers through Delwyn's hair. Oh, yes, it was absolutely lovely. Was the, the sights, the adventures. It was such a dream. Isn't that right, dear? She gives uh, you a kiss on the cheek. Yes. Roll a willpower, Delwyn. <laughs> Another willpower. Yeah, he's, he's starting to get confused, like, wait a minute, this woman wouldn't willingly give up her ship. What's going on here? She doesn't seem like the marriage type to me, either. Yeah, that's that's a little odd, a little weird. <laughs> wow, that's pretty good. Surprising. I mean, your yeah, yeah, you're starting to feel like something's a little off. Uh, one of the Tevinter mages, uh, there's a the town hall. There's like a town hall here in Tevinter. Uh, it opens up and you see what you presume to be the mayor, um, and it says, "This just in." Um, and he said, and he says, the, uh, the, um, king of Ferelden has just be bequeathed that blood magic is legal. Uh, blood <laughs> magic is legal. And, um, and, uh, pretty, s and he says, there is talk that, that all of the other lands are, um, are planning on legalizing, uh, this, this, uh, ancient craft that must be preserved, <laughs> and there's everybody around around you says huzzah, and they start slitting the wrists, and it's like, it's like huzzah, <laughs> slitting the wrists, and it's like yay, <laughs> <"Hey>, blood, <laughs> hooray. Now I know I'm being bullshit. <laughs> as soon as that happens, again everything around you goes black. Uh oh, and then. The scene around you materializes. That was the most disturbing scene ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll wait till what yeah. happens next. You find yourself in Kirkwall now, Delwyn. And again, just like uh, Lealden was, you are more of a ghostly figure who's just mm -hmm. watching these events. 
you see a group of Templar um, coming. Uh, you see, you see a group of Templar coming into the alienage of Kirkwall, and several of the elves uh, are running about the streets. Some of them are running into their houses. Other people. Everybody's in a panic um, because this is not something that happens every day, and and it's it's. Uh, there's a lot of discomfort going on around the alienage. Uh, in front of the in front of the pack of Templars is a man with red hair, Liam. Liam looks around. He points. That way. He's pointing at your house. The Templar. Uh, make their way over to, to to your house. Liam goes and he pounds on the door. The door creaks open uh, and it's your father. Your father says, um, he's Mr. Templar, sir? How can I help you? Liam just barges in. The rest of the Templars follow. Uh, your father starts uh, getting a little nervous and a little shaky, and he says, um, "Can can can I get you something to drink? Maybe some 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 tea, uh, at all?" And and Liam says, "We don't plan on being here for too long. Have a seat." And he motions to one of the chairs in the room. Your father sits down. Liam goes over to the other side of the chair. He places, he actually places his hands on the top of a chair, leans in. We're here because we are looking for your son. Delwyn, I think is his name. Um, your father says, As I, I'm afraid I, I have no idea where your son is. Um, Liam, um, rubs his eyes a little bit and he says are you sure he hasn't tried to make contact with you at all um the your father um looks down on the ground and says uh, no I, I swear to you by the maker i swear to you i have no idea where he is we haven't seen him in all almost 10 years now uh, why do you need why do you need to find him liam um, takes, uh, takes, um, um, a parchment and he places down, on the parchment are the portrait of Annabelle, there's a photo of Annabelle, and he says, this woman was murdered by him, along with some others, including a baby that was being taken care of by the Arl. Ghostly Delwyn's just like, not this. No, I know where this is going. He's like, redhead, hey, I'm right here, come on! You try to get his attention, and you try to interfere in the scene, but uh, unfortunately you are powerless to it, and you have you end up having to watch what's unfolding before you, even though you kind of know what's coming next. Your dad pleads with him and, and tells, asks for mercy and he says, I really don't know what happened to him. I swear to you, my son would never do this. And Liam says, how do you know? You said so yourself. You haven't seen your son in 10 years. How can you honestly say that you don't know what he's become this entire time? And it just gets really difficult from there. And, um, and he, he says, <laughs> Sanaya, Sanaya will tell you. He, she's, she's one of you, isn't she? And and uh, Liam says, Sinai is not here. She is not Liberty. Um, she is not uh, involved in these investigations whatsoever because of conflict of interest. Um, and uh, he continues to try to um, press more and more. And your dad starts weeping and he says, I don't know, I don't know. At, one, at that point, Liam and another... Um, Templar grabs a hold of your dad's shoulders and then yanks him out. They drag him out of the house um, and at this point there's been a gathering of elves uh, around outside of your home. Uh, the crowd disperses when the Templars come out. They take your dad, they toss him in the ground. People gasp 
and um, some people are peeking out from the windows. Um, he takes his sword um, and he th- and he puts it puts it up to your dad's throat. And Liam turns to the rest of the crowd and he says, "Let this be a warning to any of you who tried to escape from the alienage." Um, and with that, he thrusts his sword up your father's throat. And your father falls. Yeah, the entire time Delwyn's just trying to interfere with the entire thing, and at that point he's just like... Great. The, um... The scene around (laughs) you grows silent. The Templars start to disappear, the elves disappear, and you're left there alone with your dad um, at the alienage. You hear the sound of weeping behind you. And you turn around and it's your sister. Um, She looks at you with tears in her eyes and she says, How could you let this happen? She says. How was I supposed to know it was happening? If you hadn't run off, if you hadn't left in the first place, this would not have happened. If you had just stayed at the alienage like you were supposed to. And you didn't even say goodbye. You left without even saying goodbye. I miss you so much, brother. And now, our family's destroyed. Not only did I lose you, but we lost mom and dad. It's all your... It's all your fault! She says. You don't think I don't know that? I'm sorry. Oh, there's... You're right. A lot of stuff that was terrible happened, and I was the initial cause of all of it. You're you're right. You're right. I'm selfish. I am completely selfish. You've never said you're sorry like that before. She backs off a little bit, and then the seed fades. Next victim. Yes. <laughs> and that sad move. It's hard to stay angry when you know your sister's like breaking yeah. down. I know. I was. I, I, I was. I was actually. I, I was. I, I like that. It was like a different. It was. It was like a very. It was like pretty much a, almost a very similar situation, but just the different. Rea- the different responses Handled to it. Handled very differently. Yeah. yeah. I think that's Ray who's next. Hands on that. Yeah, Ray had a 13, so I think he's Ray. next. Ray. Okay. Yeah. Half decent roll, so Ray. not great. You are in the White Spire. And, uh... Oh, yeah, that's exactly what You are in the White Spire. <laughs> and you are in a very magnificent-looking chamber with, um, all these books and... There's like a wizard's table in front of you with a lot of very um, amazing and intriguing looking instruments and potions. There's a knock on the door. Um, and it's, Evangel- it's Eveline's voice. And Eveline what? says, First Enchanter? First Enchanter? What? 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 Eveline? You swing open the door and uh, Eveline is there. She's a little bit more aged than the last time you saw her. And she says, I immediately hug her. Eveline. Oh, uh, good morning to you too, First Enchanter. Uh, these are the reports. Um, uh, uh, as you can what? see, thanks to it's your help with my research, we were finally able to find a cure of that horrible pox. I'm like looking at the reports, and then I think about it for a second. First Enchanter, I look in the mirror <laughs> to see if I'm any older. 
Uh, yeah, you look in the mirror and you've aged very gracefully. You look, you look pretty good. It's probably been about 15 years. You're a little bit like 15 years older. You're in your early, your mid 30s, which actually is relatively young for somebody to become a first chanter. But it's not unusual. But it's not. Um, it's happened before. <laughs> Wait. So I decided to tell it back to the other new character. But anyways. But yeah, you have aged. You're in your mid thirties yeah. now. Oh. Uh, I was, I'm, I'm sorry. My head is. Uh, I'm going to sit down and what? And my it looks like look very confused. My chair. Um, and puts the papers on the table and says, it's, "Okay, please. Uh, can you say that again, Evelyn? I just need to, to sit." Uh, Eva, uh, Evelyn says, "Oh, uh, well." You remember all the work we've been doing over the last several years to try to find to find a cure. Well, um, we were able to find a cure of not only the pox, but pretty much all of the ailments of the world. No, just think, Brunel. A world with no more sickness, no more afflictions. It's what we've always dreamed of. Yes. There's another knock on the door, and you see a very stunningly beautiful woman with short hair. And uh, she says, Hey there. Miss me? Jody walks into the room. She is dressed in senior enchant. She's dressed in uh, senior enchanter clothing. Uh, my character uh, like, like puts his, pushes back his chair and stands up again. Jody! Uh, congratulations, Gwinnell. Oh, I'm sorry, First Enchanter. No, it's still just Gwinnell. Um, she says, uh, she says a lot of things have, uh, uh, have definitely been picking up around here. A lot more excitement. Yes. It's all very confusing, and my head is spinning from it. All this was realization. My character's eyes widen a little bit, and then goes back to flats. <laughs> oh, um. All right. So, looking at the papers and whatnot, uh, did you have something to say, Jody? Um... Oh, you just here for a happy little visit. Oh, I'm just for here for a visit. Uh, just wanted to let you know, though, that um, Dominique, it's taking a while for him to finish cleaning the fixtures. <laughs> oh, tell him after he's done cleaning the fixtures, I need him to uh, unclog the restroom. Oh, of course. I will go do that. She leaves. Come, First Enchanter, it's time for you to, to address the congregation. Uh, Evan, uh, Evelyn says. Uh, right, um... Grabs, stop and whatnot. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh... Let us off then, eh? <laughs> right. You, uh, go over to, uh, you go down the hallway, and you see a bunch of familiar faces, uh, one of which is Dominique, but he's not in Templar, uh, uh, he's not in a Templar armor at all. In fact, he's more in servant's clothing. And uh, as you pass by, Dominique says, uh, First Enchanter, I, I will get to those to those uh, clogs as, me as soon as I finish uh, with the fixtures here. I know you will, Dominique. You're a hard worker. Uh, as you guys, as you're going down down the uh, stairs, down the tower, um, uh, Evelyn will say, will say oh, isn't it wonderful? Um, ever since uh, we were able to find peace between uh, the mages and the Templars, uh, things around Thetis couldn't be better. I... It is like a dream come true. Oh, know? yes. Oh, like a dream come true. And then that's when everything fades. <laughs> Everything fades to black. Um, ah, Zoot, what is going on here? 
reemerges. You find yourself in a building that you're not familiar with. It looks like a relatively it looks like a noble noble person's <coughs> building. And there right. is a crib in front of you. Um and you hear the sound of crying. Uh if you go over to the crib there is a little baby. Um and uh, somebody is entering into the room. Uh, My character it's... says to himself when he goes to the crib and whatnot, what manner of dream and or vision am I having? This is a quick change. The, um, the, um, the, per somebody comes into the room, uh, and it is a, it's a, a roughly middle-aged man, uh, with a beard. Gotta love the beard. Behind him... <laughs> is a behind him is Eveline from but she looks like she's back to the age that you're used to her being and uh, the gentleman comes into the room he picks up the baby and says oh Alistair 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 what is wrong with you now <clears throat> it looks like he needs some changing uh, Eveline says oh isn't he such a dear do you mind? Certainly. Uh, the gentleman gives Alistair over to Evelyn, and and he says, "Oh, Arl Eamon, he's adorable." Um. And uh, Evelyn says, "We're gonna let him. Uh, just give me a moment. I think I know where the diapers are kept." And he leaves the room. And Evelyn uh, rocks the baby a little bit, uh, which calms him down slightly. Um. <clears throat> And then, as she's placing the baby back into the crib, um, she everything the room starts to grow dark, purplish, <laughs> and uh, she uh, pulls out her staff um, as if waiting for something to pounce at her. And she turns around, and there's this what is it? Purplish smoke. Um, enters the room and starts to invade her nostrils. She gasps as she drops her staff on the floor. And you start to see this silhouette, this demonic silhouette forming in front of her. Um, her eyes meet the demon and she's like frozen. Like she can't, Eveline can't move. Um, the demonic figure disappears just as the last of the purplish smoke finishes invading her nostrils and Evelyn shakes shakes it off um, and uh, it looks like she's coming back from a trance um, and she looks very confused Arl Eamon comes back into the room with the diapers um, and he sees and notices Evelyn with a puzzled look on her face and he says is something the matter uh, senior enchanter. Eveline says, No. Nothing. Sorry. I, sorry, I'm not really sure what God came over me. She she looks at the staff that's on the floor, puzzled, and she picks it up again. The scene before you grows silent, Gwenael, and you hear, separate from the Eveline that you're seeing in front of you, you hear Eveline's voice again, uh, from behind you and you turn around and there is a ghostly figure of Evelyn and she's talking to you and says Gwenael such broad goals you have so many that I fear you're never going to be able to fulfill them you have so many good intentions and I always admired that but you just never had the drive. I always try to encourage you to, to go after the things that you really care for, but you're always so timid. My life was cut short before I was able to do more of the wonderful things that I wanted to fill. It was cut so short, Grinnell, and I fear the same thing is going to happen to you. I will not let it. 
My character's eyes are tearing up a little bit. No. I am having this vision for a reason. My character just keeps on saying, no, no. I right. promise you. Gwenelle resists uh, what the what the ghostly Evelyn is saying, and we will finally move on to Maximilian. Yeah, Maximilian. 18. Yep. So Max, you um, are in Denerim, and you are at the castle again. Now this is different from when you were a guardsman at the castle in your nightmare. Um, All right. You are standing guard in front of the throne room, and um, Plim, uh, Plim walks over and says, Hey, Maxi Maxi, uh, don't look now, but you know who's coming. You turn uh, towards the direction that he's pointing at, and you see um, one of the most, uh, you see a, one of the most beautiful women, woman that you've ever seen. And uh, she's carrying a little child in her arms. And uh, she comes over to you and says, and says, Max, um, you, you said you would be able to get off of work early today, right? The, her, His Highness said that you could in order to celebrate our son's birthday. I take my work very seriously, you know that. Uh, as, as I'm, as I'm saying this, and uh, I'm already starting to to, to yeah. doubt what's going on. You're uh, yeah, you're not buying this. Your will is like really really high, and uh, um, and uh, you glance towards a mirror, and you see that all of your scars are gone, <laughs> completely gone. And as off as awesome as that is, that tips you off. I like, can okay, I make a willpower test or something like that, or can I just... I, do I yeah. realize this is, this is weird? As, and you don't even have to do that, because you scored so high with your willpower, you immediately know this is not right. This is not... No, you're not buying this. And people have told me again and again that demons can play with your mind. Yep. So I'm, I'm like, looking over the throne room. Is this... The best you've got, I say as I walk down the stairs. <laughs> oh. Are you afraid to face me in person? <laughs> I fear no evil. I am fear incarnate. I pull out my sword. <laughs> Come, yeah. face me if you dare. Nice. Yes. Bravo. <laughs> the image before you wipes away. And in its <laughs> place, you find yourself in now you're not in your armor you're not even the right age you are much younger you you feel that yourself is shorter and you are inside some sort of wagon some sort of covered wagon and um, this feels familiar to you um, you know this you remember this this is this is a memory of yours from when you were a child you look out of the covered wagon, and it's a caravan of sorts. And you see your mom in full majestic armor on horseback, as she is, um, as she is, escorting this caravan. You have a sinking feeling that you know exactly what's going to happen next. Yeah. It's starting to grow dark. The caravan is starting to talk about setting up camp, and you're just a bystander like you're there are you don't have control unfortunately of what's happening yeah. um that's when an arrow uh suddenly embeds itself in one of the other riders in his in his throat and he falls over your mom immediately pulls out her sword um and everybody else <laughs> the other um everybody else follows suit and pulling out a weapon Within an instant, the caravan gets attacked, and um, there is a there is a major battle between the caravan and the bandits that are trying to ransack uh, 
their goods. Um, you, however, I think are too young. Were you too young yeah. to have a sword? Yes. You, however, yes, you were too young. So you, you just kind of hid out of the way. Your mom, as she passes by the wagon, she, she quickly runs. Uh, she quickly grabs you by the arm and says, "Just stay hidden," and pushes you back in. Uh, and she goes, uh, turns around just in time to parry uh, a blow of one of the bandits. You watch in horror as the caravan are unfortunately losing the fight uh, as a big giant fireball blasts uh, a large group of them as they go flying in every direction. Um, you hear several of the um, several of the people on in the caravan curse. There's a mage! There's a mage in their ranks! You look up and another fireball is coming, hurtling straight towards the wagon that you're in. So you jump out and are managed to get out of the way as the entire wagon goes up in flames. Um, you try to meander your way around the confusion and uh, you are, um, you end up bumping into somebody in the confusion, uh, a robed figure. You look up and it's a mage, the mage that you realize has been casting the spells that has been destroying the caravan. Um, you hold up your arms to shield yourself as it looks like the mage is about to blast you with an icy blast. But then something comes over the mage and he freezes um, as if caught in some sort of a force cage. Uh, that's when a giant blade um, drives in through his chest and uh, the individual pulls it out and the mage falls and collapses. What you see before you is a figure in full armor and a helmet and he lifts you up um, as another bandit um, um, is running towards him from behind. You scream and yell out, you scream and yell, look out. At that moment, you see the warrior um, pass his hand over his blade and it, uh, and it um, gets caught on fire. Um, and he strikes, he turns around and strikes the bandit in the gut. Um, and the bandit bursts into flames. <clears throat> um, nice. the, uh, warrior, um, uh, stops. And at this point you run off to look for your mom. This, by this point, the battle has died down a bit and the bandits uh, run off as a um, the bandits uh, run off as a giant thunderstorm like sort of emerged above them um, and you're looking around and you finally find your mom she is badly wounded and um, you get to her and you grab a hold of your her hand and she kind of very weakly, like, um, runs her fingers through your hair. Um, and she says, I'm sorry, Max, but you're going to have to go on without me. Fight the good fight, my son. Always fight the good fight. And she emphasizes the word good. And she collapses. You start to weep as you are reliving this horror and a warm hand is placed on your shoulder. Um, you look up with, with your eyes sobbing and you can barely make <laughs> out the same warrior that had saved your life there. Time moves forward a little bit and this time you are outside of your body. This time you see yourself um, sitting on a... You see yourself, it's nighttime. You're trying to fall asleep in your sack, but you're having a hard time falling asleep. And um, 
you're able to see a conversation between two figures. One is the gentleman who saved you. The other one is a woman as she pulls out her helmet. Um, this woman um, and him are having like a conversation and the man says, um, are there any survivors? The woman says <clears throat> in a heavy Orlesian uh, accent, which I can't do, but she's talking in a Orlesian accent. She says, no, um, I, I've looked and it's only the boy. I was able to, um, I, it's only the boy. And uh, the man says that thunderstorm spell um, came in quite in hand, quite hand, uh, quite in handy. And uh, the Orlesian woman says, "Yes, but unfortunately, it um, uh, didn't do enough." Maximilian, you can't help but feel that the woman, the Orlesian woman, looks very familiar, or at least she has very similar features to Gwenael. Gwenael. Very similar features to Gwenael. Um, and Strange. the woman turns to um, turns to the male warrior and says, "So Hector, what should we do?" Hector <laughs> um, shakes his head. We'll have to take him. We'll have to find somebody to take care of the boy. Perhaps someone in Denera might be able to. To help him, watch over him. Um, the the Orlesian woman said, "You're always a sucker for you're always were a sucker for um, saving uh, saving the innocent, especially children." And uh, the warrior smiles. Uh, you know me. You realize that the warrior is also of Elven descent. Mm. Um. Whereas the Orlesian woman is of human descent. And as you're looking at the warrior, you kind of notice some similar features to Gwenael in him as well. What? Hmm. 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 Okay. Uh -huh. 